Hey guys, this is Tyler Zombro with Tread Athletics. Uh, today I wanted to take a dive into left-handed four-seam fastballs. We've been touching on each pitch type and today looking at lefty specifically, kind of the same trend that we anticipate with four seam fastballs. So we know that velocity, vertical break, and vertical approach angle are gonna be those outlier qualities that are really sustainable with four seam fastball success. Just to kind of recap some of those that we're looking at, for velocity wise at the big league level, you're looking at about 93 plus miles an hour to really get that bump in whiff rate and decrease in WOBA. Vertical break, once you're above 16, 17 vertically, we can see success holding pretty steadily above that. Vertical approach angle, when you're getting down towards negative four, of course, this is heavily dependent upon location, where it's thrown in the zone. The command of this is also gonna be critical for success, especially throwing to the same handed hitter versus the opposite. If you're commanding the upper quadrant of the zone, you can expect a lot of success. So where are the outlier identifiers for forcing fastball success that really vary? That's gonna be horizontal break. So horizontal break with four seam fastballs coming from a lefty is gonna determine whether you're throwing it to the same handed hitter or the opposite hand hitter. If you have cut, cut can perform against both handed hitters. In general, you're gonna see that perform really well on the same hand. And then looking at the opposite hand, expect success with that as well. When we get into exceptional run, that's really where we have some differences. So that's where you'll see if you're running the four seam out to 15 to 20 horizontal, expect that success to be better to the same handed hitter and not the opposite. So this lefty scenario, four seam running fastball, really good against lefty hitters, and then against righty hitters, probably not going to perform quite as well. So to show a little bit of the differences with that, two great examples, Robbie Ray, a guy who's gonna utilize velocity, approach angle, vertical break. Against right-handed hitters, he had a 315 Woba again, and 21 and a 267 Woba against lefties. So looking at that pretty close, you're within 50 points there. So overall, we're not seeing a huge jump in terms of how his four seam is performing. And again, that's because he relies on those three really consistent variables with four seam fastball success. Versus Chris Sale, we're looking at his Woba against righties at 376 and lefties 141. So over a 200 point jump there and you can see that his four seam fastball due to the amount of run is gonna have a ton of success against the same hand of hitter, not so much against the opposite hand. So as you're kind of building out your arsenal, again, seeing what pitch usage you wanna to utilize to each handed hitter in this lefty scenario, I hope this gives you a really good idea of with your four seam fastball profile, how you should be utilizing this through both lefties and righties and really able to build your usages around that. have actually found some pretty crazy data points with left-handed sinkers specifically, especially looking at velocity. So once you're above 87 miles an hour, there is actually a pretty good tick in whiff rate going up and WOBA going down, which is way below the velocity threshold that we've seen with right-handed sinkers. And then if you look at left-handed sinkers to righties, that velocity threshold has actually moved up to about 92 miles an hour to predict success. So something to kind of note there could be a deceptive piece left on left, maybe predominantly growing up right-handed BP throwers, maybe it really is uh, an outlier illusion. But something I thought interesting there is that the velocity threshold to left on left is really not that high. Looking at horizontal break, so Overall, you're going to see sinkers left on left perform really, really well, as long as you're not cutting the pitch drastically. So once you're above eight inches horizontally, so getting eight plus arm side run, you're gonna be in a lot of area of success there with that pitch overall. Left on left, you have a lot more opportunity for whiff rate as well. So when I look at vertical approach angle, there is really only a tiny sliver where we see whiff rate get below the median line and we see WOBA start to creep up a little bit. And that's basically where we're just assuming that the pitch has flattened out or it's in the dead middle of the zone. 
Otherwise, on that vertical approach angle scale, we're seeing whiff rate and WOBA both be in really, really good spots for left on left. So wanted to talk about uh, two different examples of left-handed sinkers and how they perform. So first guy is Josh Fleming. And with Josh Fleming, his WOBA against left-handed hitters was 311. Against righties, it was 335. So something we're starting to see here trend-wise with sinker ball guys is if they're relying on a decent amount of seam shift, in general, that's gonna perform pretty much the same to both-handed hitters. So that's more of that, not a too much horizontal break but more of that deceptive depth quality. And then looking at lower slot guys, so Aaron Loop is an example of a low slot lefty. With his sinker, he had a 190 Woba against to left-handed batters, and to righties, it was 288. So you can see there from the lower slot, right-handed hitters are doing much well. Of course, you're looking at a scenario where you're utilizing pinch hitters, guys who have better platoon advantages against these unique slot guys. But in general, for the lower slot guy, you're gonna see a bigger separation of how it performs to a righty versus a lefty. And then the seam shift guys, we can see they're staying pretty consistent with that. So overall with left-handed sinkers, again, as long as you're not cutting it, it's above 87 miles an hour and you're not throwing in the dead central part of the zone and it's flattening out, probably gonna have a ton of success with this pitch. So again, these numbers really stood out to me, jumping more so than the right-handed sinker examples. So that's what we have for left-handed sinkers. Unlike right-handed cutters, I didn't see a ton of success with left on right cutters, which is not really what I expected. I expected the trend to be similar to righties, but for whatever reason, it uh, could obviously be with our data sample in the big leagues this past year, but wasn't a ton of success with left-handed cutters to right-handed hitters. Looking at that, I think you have to be so good with the cutter left on right to where every quality essentially needs to be outlier. And with that in mind, it needs to be 88 plus miles an hour, getting below five vert, horizontal, getting past the zero line in terms of glove side movement, and then of course throwing it in good locations. So unlike righties with the Jansen and Classe examples, didn't see a ton of that where guys performed well against the opposite hand. However, left on left cutters did perform well. So for whatever reason, keeping that in mind that uniform across the board, left on left cutters were good. And looking at that, 84 miles an hour was really the velocity threshold in terms of vertical break. We actually saw that bumped up to about eight vert. So as long as you're getting below eight vertical, left on left cutters can perform well. And horizontal break, again, getting past the zero line puts you in a successful place. So a couple of examples that I wanted to look at were AJ Mentor and John Lester. So AJ Mentor against right-handed hitters had a WOBA of 307 against and against lefties had a 187 Woba against. So this is a guy who probably had the best performing cutter in baseball for left-handed pitchers. And in looking at that, he still had a 120 point gap in Wobas to lefties versus righties. John Lester provides a pretty unique example because I think he kind of hits on that trend I talked about where the cutter really has to be elite to be good to right-handed hitters from the lefty. And looking at that last year, John Lester's Woba against two right-handed hitters was 464 and to lefties it was 196 so almost a 300 point gap there obviously that's a huge difference again that cutter has to be so good to perform well left on right however if you go back and look at John Lester's cutter from 2016 it had a 288 Woba against with right-handed batters so nearly 200 points less than where he was at this past year. And a lot of that has to do with the velocity trade-off. You're looking at where he went from averaging, historically pushing 88, 89 miles an hour on average with the cutter to last year being 86 and a half. So about a two and a half, three mile an hour drop really hurt the success of that left-handed cutter to right-handed hitters. So in general, with left-handed cutters, probably something you're gonna isolate left on left really has to be outlier pitch quality or thrown in really, really good spots to perform well to right-handed batters. So that's what we have for left-handed cutters. Again, make sure you're using them wisely. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.